This video that you're about to watch is from my Omni model course. You can get access to it for free. Yes, for free by going to the link in the description below. Now let's get into the video. All right, so we just went over all the different types of key levels. Now let's move on to section three. So now we're gonna talk about price swings. And this is one of those lessons that is just a little bit more important than everything else in this section. Not to say the other stuff is not important, but this one is just a little bit more important. When I started to see price the way that I'm about to show you is when everything started to unlock for me. It's when I started to see price in just a different way and it allowed me to trade any type of market during any kill zone. So without any further ado, let's get into it. And so the first thing that we're going to cover is data ranges or data ranges. So the algorithm that I was talking about, this AI system, it will use key levels within the last 20, 40, and 60 days. So if you look at your daily chart, you want to note the last 20, 40, and 60 days, and you want to find the high and low within that. So for example, if you look at the last 20 days and there's a clear high and low, that is the range that you're working within in the algorithm, the AI system is going to most likely refer to key levels within those 20 days. Now, let's say you don't have a clear swing high or a clear swing low within those 20 days. Then you're going to move on to 40 and then you're going to move on to 60 if there is no clear swing high or swing low within the 40 days. Usually there is at least a 20, 40 or 60. There are a few times, usually towards the end of quarters, when there isn't a clear 20, 40 or 60 day high or low. And that's because we're about to end a quarter. We're about to start a new quarter. So there's going to be new sentiment in the market. A new range will form and you simply just have to wait. It's not going to take long, usually no longer than a week in normal circumstances. And so here's an example. We're looking at the Euro dollar. And right now, if you look at the top, I have denoted the last 20 days and I put a red line on that 20th day marker. But if you look closely, you can see we have a clear swing high. So everything to the right of that red line is the last 20 days. There's a clear swing high, but there is not a clear swing low. On this exact current day, we are actually at the lowest we've ever been in the last 20 days. But there isn't a swing low because we don't have a candle to the right that is has a higher low than the current day. So there is no swing low. And so because that is the case, we're going to move on to... 40 days now. So now I moved that red line back to 40 days. And now you can clearly see that there's a clear swing high and a clear swing low if we're looking to the right of the red line. So that is the range that we're going to be working with. And so once you have that, now you want to measure from the high to the low and you want to find 50% of that range. 50% of that range is what we call equilibrium. Everything below equilibrium, we're going to call a discount and everything above equilibrium, we're going to call a premium. As a general rule of thumb, you never want to be a buyer when price is in a premium and you never want to be a seller when price is in a discount. So we flip that around, always buy in a discount, always sell in a premium. So if we look at the chart right now, where are we at? We are at a discount. So you don't want to be selling. If anything, you either want to be a buyer or you want to wait for price to take out this low and then be a buyer. In this very specific case, I want to see price take out this low. I don't want to be a buyer in this situation. We are very heavy on the euro dollar, very bullish on the dollar. And why is that? And now I'm giving you guys some analysis, but why is that? Because at the time of this recording, there's a lot of tension, a lot of Things going on overseas, especially in the Middle East. And when you have times like this, when you have very aggressive times, the dollar tends to rally. And remember, like how I was saying with correlated markets, if the dollar is going up, everything else is most likely going to go down. So in this case, the euro dollar should go down if the dollar is meant to go higher. So I do not want to be a buyer, even though we're in a discount. But I'm just showing you this to show you how you measure your range and how you find your key levels. So because we're looking at the last 40 days, what's the key level that we're targeting? We're targeting the liquidity of the last 40 days. And so here I have noted the daily inversion fair value gap. That is what we're touching right now. And like I was telling you before, I expect it to trade through that. This is actually current time. So I'll give you a current analysis. I don't know when you're going to be watching this video, but feel free to go back. It's a, 
early April right now, see if we traded through that daily inversion fair value gap and actually went for the day low or not. But that is it when it comes to data ranges. That's all we're looking at for the daily chart. If you're trying to have a good understanding of what the next week or month may come to, then we want to look at the daily ranges. And we do that by looking at the last 20, 40, and 60 days. So now we're going to move on to price swings, seeing how market moves as a whole, looking at the structure of the market. And this is really what I was talking about when I said things started to unlock for me when I started to look at price like this. So I want you to envision price like a bell curve. Price goes up to go down, down to go up. That's generally the overall structure of price. And so it doesn't just move straight up and down, though. It moves and swings. So I know this bell curve is very smooth, but I just want you to think of it in the general sense of before we go higher, price is going to drop. So if we look at the left side of the bell curve, price is going to drop to go higher. And if we were to flip this bell curve, price would go up to go lower. But it doesn't just move straight up and down like how you see right here. So for what we're learning in this course, I really want you to focus on the right side of the curve. Right side of the curve is where we are going to find our opportunity. We're not trying to guess. And there are ways. And you will eventually graduate to that as you get better before this course and for what you need just to be successful in trading and make a shit ton of money is to focus on that right side of the curve so we're gonna let price drop we're not trying to capture that move we're not trying to we can anticipate it, but we're not trying to guess and be a part of that move we're gonna wait for it to drop and then we want to be a buyer when we're on that right side of the curve as price is rallying. We're just riding the coattails of the market, letting it show us what it wants to do. And then we just follow behind. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to do anything special. And generally, it takes about one, two swings to reach the high of the curve. So we're looking at the right side of the curve. And I know it's smooth right now. I'm going to show you a better depiction. I just wanted to show you the general idea of what the bell curve and the idea of how you should think of the market, but it takes about one to two swings. So what do I mean by that? Is that price is going to go up, go down, go up, go down, and then most likely get to the high of where we started it. And so now we're going to talk about grading these price swings. So now this is a better depiction of what it may look like in the market. So what we're going to do is we're going to, draw like a line so if you were to split a line right down the middle and have the left side of the curve and have the right side of the curve we're going to measure from that initial high all the way to the left all the way to the bottom of the curve this is why we are waiting for the market to have this down move we're not trying to be a part of it once we think that it made a potential low we're going to measure from that high to that low and we're going to find 50 percent now, remember, I told you 50% is called equilibrium. Above equilibrium is a premium and below equilibrium is a discount. And the general rule of thumb is sell at a premium and buy at a discount. Think of it as if you were in a store. The sellers in the store want to sell it at the highest price. The consumers, the buyers, they want to buy it at the cheapest price. It's that simple. We're buying when price is low at the cheapest price and we're selling when price is high at the highest price. Now, when you measure from that high to the low, now that you know equilibrium, the best setups, the best buys that are going to happen on that right side is going to be between 20 to 30% from that high all the way to the left to the low that it made. If you measure 20 to 30%, that is where buy that I have circled happens so many times. Like go back in your chart and don't just take my word for it. Go back in your chart. And look at all the price moves and just measure it from 20 or my bad. Just measure it from the high to the low and find 20 to 30 percent and find how many times your retracements where the market returns and goes back to the original trend. So like in this case, price went lower, then went higher and then came back where I have it circled. That usually happens at 20 to 30 percent. And that is going to be your best buy. That is what we are hunting for as traders in this course. That is my bread and butter setup. That is my favorite setup. It is almost the only setup that I use. I do use, as we can see, it's called low risk buy. 
Now that is going to be the buy that happens before we get the 20 to 30 percent. And sometimes price does offer it. Sometimes it doesn't, as we will learn later in the course. But after you have that first stage, then remember I said it usually takes one to two swings. So the first swing will be that first stage, but the second uh, swing will be second stage or what I call second stage, ICT calls second stage. And that will usually happen if we had the first stage of that 20 to 30%. If that happened before price ever got to equilibrium or closed above equilibrium. So like if price dropped lower and then went higher, but we didn't get to equilibrium yet and then came back down into the 20 to 30%. Then when price goes higher again, we can expect another retracement, usually around the equilibrium level. And it could be below it because we want to be a buyer, ideally in a discount. That is going to be your second stage. And you can enter on that as well. And usually when you have that, that is when you have your very explosive runs. Now, let's say price went lower, came up, gave us a low risk buy or it didn't give us a low risk buy then went all the way up to equilibrium and closed above equilibrium and then came down into that first stage, that 20 to 30% level, then there's a chance that it might just go straight for the liquidity and not even give us a second stage distribution. Now, the beauty of this and why I love viewing the market like this is that you don't even need it to get to that high to be profitable. Imagine that you enter that 20 to 30% and price goes up above equilibrium. So let's say it went to 70 and 80% of the range. Why am I using 70 to 80%? Because if you have 20 to 30%, put it on the other side, then you're at 70 to 80%. If you just capture that move right there, that can make you a millionaire. That right there usually averages out to around two to three times whatever you put in. So if you put a hundred dollars in and you'll say you're a scalper because this happens on every time frame, every single time frame, all the way from your weekly, all the way down to your five second chart. So if you enter that first stage and you're on a 15 second chart and you get a move from first stage all the way to 70, 80%, which may only take five minutes. If that maybe like two, three minutes, because we're on a 15 second chart and you put five hundred dollars a hundred dollars you can get possibly three times what you put in so if let's say you did put 500 you can make fifteen hundred dollars within two to five minutes and that is why i love scalping and that is why i love day trading and that is why i love viewing the market in this way because it is how the ai system operates it operates against human psychology price is going to drop it's going to drop fast what is that going to do to everyone? Who wants to buy as price is going lower? That just goes against how we think. You're going to be scared. People are going to enter on the opposite side of the market. They're going to keep selling. And then it's going to reverse. Boom, boom, boom. And then go take out where their stop losses may be at that very high. And that is how we view the market. So I have sell side liquidity. That is the low that we're measuring it from. And then price rallied up, made a high. And all I did was measure from the very low, so the sell side liquidity where that blue line is at, all the way to the high on the right. All I did was measure from that, and the red dotted lines is 20 to 30%, and the orange dotted line is equilibrium. So you can see that we closed below the 20 to 30% level. We come back to it, look how it touches it perfectly, and we go lower for that liquidity. Now also notice how after we touch 20 to 30%, we drop lower again. So if we look right here, after we go up into 20 to 30%, we drop lower again, giving us another retracement, giving us what? Second stage distribution. Why would we expect second stage distribution? If I go back, remember how I said, if we rally up, and don't hit equilibrium, let's say equilibriums are somewhere around here, then we can expect that second stage distribution. So if we go back to the example, you can see that we rallied down. We didn't hit equilibrium, gives us first stage, comes down, gives us second stage because we didn't hit equilibrium. And then I told you the most explosive moves are going to happen after we've done second stage. Boom. 
look how fast it goes for that low. Why is it doing it so fast? Because a lot of traders are thinking we're going to keep going higher, maybe even take out this high. We've been trading high because this is a whole separate day. So the blue dotted line delineates a different day. So traders wake up and they're like, oh, look at this move that happened overnight. I want to be a buyer. I definitely don't want to sell. It's too strong for me because of buying and selling pressure. If you know what that is, that's what a lot of traders are taught. It's completely false. But the main point of this diagram is to show that we have first stage and then second stage distribution. Now I do have these boxes and what are they? So if you look in this run up and you look to the left of the chart, the last swing high that we took out was here, right? So this was an order block, right? And then we traded through the order block. So it failed, so it becomes a mitigation block, but then that mitigation block fails. So it becomes an order block again, which we called a reclaimed order block. If you remember what I was saying before in the video and actually last video, when we were talking about order blocks and we we're talking about all the key levels, I said that I allow them to be used twice. In other words, I allow them to be reclaimed twice. So in this case, the order block failed and then we trade it below it again. So I'm allowing price to use it again. So I call that a reclaimed order block. When you find your 20 to 30%, and this is the big, big key. So please pay attention. When you find your 20 to 30%, you want to align it with the reclaimed order block or a breaker within that range. That is what price is going to use for the first stage. And then also remember that all order blocks, all types of order blocks become high probability if there is a fair value gap. So if we were to drop down to a one minute chart, I am sure that there is some type of fair value gap or imbalance within this range. There is a inversion fair value gap right here. Cause if you draw that out, we trade it through it, come back to it perfectly. There goes your inversion fair value gap. Now, after we hit the reclaimed order block, we trade lower below this red box. What is that? This is a breaker. This low, we take out that low, take out sell side liquidity, goes higher to take out this swing high, it takes out buy side liquidity. Then we go lower to take out this low again, making that a breaker. Notice how it doesn't use the breaker here because the bodies don't trade below it. Yes, the wicks do, but if you remember from last video, the wicks do the damage the bodies tell the story. The bodies don't trade below it, so it doesn't become an active breaker yet. Once the bodies trade below it, then it becomes an active breaker. Price goes higher into the reclaimed order block, 20, 30%, first stage, goes lower. Now we close below it. Now we have our breaker. Now we have second stage distribution. And I am sure that there is some type of imbalance on a one minute chart, two minute chart, three minute chart that we can use to go lower. And that is overall how we grade price swings. And so this is one of the most, in my opinion, one of the most complicated topics that we're gonna talk about. So if you are confused, it is okay. I was so confused. It actually took me years to finally get this down pat, to really understand it on the level that you need to understand it to be successful trading or to be, trading at a very high level. Now I will say this don't need, and this is the beauty of trading. You don't need to 100% understand it to be profitable. However, you do want to understand it. If you want to be highly profitable, if you want to have a high hit rate, if you want to have hit rates in the 70, 80% range, potentially, then you really want to understand this because this is the backbone of how the AI system delivers price. And so we have covered it all. There is no more to the price swing itself. I've given you all the math that I use, which is simply find the equilibrium, finding 20 to 30% of the range or the opposite 70 to 80% of the range. That is all the math that I do. There really is no more to it. You just have to go back and probably watch this video a few times go over your notes and just study it deeply. And then lastly, go into your charts because that is when it's really going to unlock for you. And then now it's time to move on to the next video. Where we're going to talk about market structure shift, which is essentially an indication that the market is going to move in an opposite direction. I don't want to say too much, 
But I will see you guys in the next video where we'll go in detail about what a market structure shift is.